comes. Um, just an impromptu. I'm gonna go live. Um, I don't even know. I don't think anybody's on. I'm super tired, so it's gonna be real short and quick. But I just wanted to share with you my day. So I enrolled in a class through my Purdue University Extension office. And the name of the class is called Mastering Home Food Preservation. And um, I'm really excited. I'm out of town. I'm actually at the Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's about two hours from where I live. So we got a hotel room. We came up yesterday. My class was from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the first half of the class was a lecture. And then um, we got into the lab and everything. And we pressure canned green beans. And we pressure canned a recipe called chili. Chili something. <laughs> um, chili con carne. So I'm like that. But I just wanted to share with you, just in that one class, I learned so much this morning and thanks everybody for joining me. Um, so to kind of recap, I am taking a mastering home food preservation class. Look at this giant notebook they gave me. I got homework tonight. We went through two chapters in class. Hey Mona, thanks for joining me. We went through two chapters in class and um, um, I got to read chapter number three tonight. There's a pre-class test that I have to take. So this is going to be real short. But like I said, I learned so much from, and I also took my own notes. I just wanted to share a couple of the things that I learned. Mona, can you hear me? I had some problems with my mic earlier. Or if anybody is out there, can you hear me? So I'm just going to go over my notes. And one of the big things that um, kind of new, but it really delves into the science of it's like, OK, so we know we should salt our pasta water. But why do you salt your pasta water? Why, you know, why do you do that? So it really delved into why it's so important. So one of the things that um, that they start out the class with is health and safety. And they have this lady on there talking, and I will probably put in the link to that video because it was really good. It was only about eight, nine minutes. But um, why it's so important when you're canning or when you're doing any type of food prep preparation to make sure you follow those steps. But when you're canning, you want to make sure you are following the proper steps. Um, so some of the things she kind of gave her testimonial of what happened to her and she said she had been canning for years and she had somebody over with her but this time they just kind of did their own thing so she said a couple of the things that she did wrong was she didn't read her canner instructions every canner is different um hey lydia hey hoeing and sewing garden thank you for joining me you're new um thank you so much but she didn't read her canning instructions, her canner instructions. Each canner is different. So you want to make sure you're reading those instructions. And if it doesn't come with instructions, you can go online. I have a Presto and I just go to the Presto website and type in that information. Also not following, not following safety guidelines. Um, she guesstimated her process time. She was pressure canning green beans. And she said she guesstimated that time. She didn't know how much to can it for. Because she didn't follow her canner instructions, she filled her pressure canner up where the water was over her jar. Well, we know that we do that for, um, for water bath canning, but you don't do that for pressure canning. So because she didn't know that, that completely threw everything off. Not to mention that she had no idea how much time she was going to go off of. Um, and she ended up getting sick. She got botulism and she said she didn't get her first signs and um, symptoms until about two days afterwards. But she said her first thing, it was two days after she ate the green beans. And so she said she canned the green beans in August. She delved into her first jar in November 
And she said in January, she was finishing up her last jar. And it wasn't until that jar in January. So that whole potential batch that she canned could have been contaminated. It was contaminated because of the way she was canning it. But she just didn't realize it. But she said she had double vision. She went to the emergency room. They checked her for signs of a stroke. They said she was all clear. So she went back home. She said she woke up the very next day and her tongue was swollen. And she said it just so happened that the emergency room doctor had called to check and see um, how she was doing. And she said with the swollen tongue, she told them that she had swelling. So they flew or they was like, come into the emergency room right now. She came into the emergency room. They started asking her about things. She said she ate some home canned green beans. Um, long story short, she had botulism. She um, eventually had total paralysis. She said she spent over 90 days in, in between hospital and rehab. She had to learn how to walk. She had to learn how to talk. She had to learn how to eat. She had to learn how to do all of those things. This is why when you can, it's so important that you are not just trusting anyone. Just because you saw it on YouTube, don't make it right. I can get on YouTube right now and tell you how to make a million dollars in 25 minutes. But does that make it true? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> but just because we saw it or someone else does it, um, doesn't mean that you should be doing that. I would rather take the extra time and make sure that I'm following all the food preparation and everything the way it's supposed to and not cut corners, I'm only going to get one husband. I'm only going to get one Mimi. I'm only going to get one Tashira. You know, I'm only going to get one of those. I can't go back if they get sick or something like that. You can't go back from that. So it's very important that you um, follow the appropriate guidelines. And thank you so much, everyone that's come in. I'm just going to do a, re a quick recap. I am at West Lafayette at the Purdue University, and I'm taking a um, Mastering Home Food Preservation class. Y'all, that's what, two and a half, three inches thick? Like, they did not come to play. They did not come to play. I got homework. So um, we're going to make this real quick tonight. But I was sharing that I took so many notes. Hey, love lady. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Ann. Um, Black Tropical Homestead. I thought I saw someone else in the chat. Sorry if I missed you. Kind of rambling on. Victorious Gardening and More. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, my name is Liz. Hi, Liz. I just started canning this year. This class, there's only eight students and about five teachers kind of cycling through, but it's anywhere from beginner where they have never canned anything. And there were some people that have been canning for a couple of years. They had me rank myself. I said that I feel like I'm not inter intermediate. I feel like I'm more advanced but I don't feel like I'm advanced because I haven't gotten to that level of where I can create my own recipes and test them. So she said that was going to come in day number four. She'll um, go through you, um, go through and kind of talk you through how to create your own recipes and testing them using a pH strip and everything like that. She also said there is this website in the book. I haven't seen it yet. I got my highlighters and pens and everything. But there's a website in the book where you can submit your your recipes. And she said it's kind of costly, um, $75, which is kind of costly. But um, for my peace of mind, for my family safety, I don't mind paying $75 to know that my recipe is an approved recipe. Um, <laughs> that's right. Um, I'm going to can broth tomorrow. I think. <laughs> so I was telling them, they were asking some of the things that I liked canning. And I said, I like canning vegetable broth. I don't can chicken broth anymore. I ain't doing it anymore. With chicken broth, you do your chicken and everything. And then once it gets done and you take all your chicken bits out, you need to um, put that in a container and let it cool. That way you can skim off all that fat. You cannot can that fat. That's a day process because it's going to take to cool. 
my um my cheat was that with that is I can vegetable broth. And once we open up the jar, if I want to season it with some beef bouillon or some chicken bouillon, I'll do it that way. But I can get two or three batches of canning vegetable broth than I can with canning chicken broth. So that's just my preference. The chicken broth always came out great, but it just took too much, too, took too long. So some other notes that I have, um, they were mentioned in the different kind of bacteria. There's salmonella. There's the stomach flu. I can't pronounce all these words. She said something similar to sal salmonella. There's the staph infection. And the big one is botulism. It's most commonly occurs in um, home canned foods. It is a neurotoxin. So the lady that Hey, Triple H, thanks for joining. So the lady that I mentioned that where she said she had caught botulism, she said she was in Utah. They had to fly the antitoxin from California. So it's not like, oh, I'll get, it's all right, my stomach hurt, I'll just sleep it off. No, this is serious. This is deadly. You don't play. This is why you have to follow all of those recommendations and everything. Um, it's extremely heat resistant. So you, that's why some recipes we have to pressure can. You can't just water bath can something and think, oh, it's good. But I'll water bath can these green beans for three hours. No, 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 no. Because at the end of the day, that boiling water only gets up to 212 degrees. You need more than 212 degrees. You need like 240, 250 degrees to kill the botulism spores when you're canning green beans. And the only way you can obtain that is to use a pressure canner. So that's why some recipes it's okay to pressure can, other recipes it's okay to water bath can because of the, the um, temperature that is required to make sure that you're killing all those off. Um, let's see. So, okay. So page two, it says <clears throat> water bath canning, 212 degrees with the pressure canning, the pressure raises the temperature of the water. So that's how it can go over 212 degrees. They say always follow a USDA research and approved based recipe or the home, give me the line, the national I'm about to look it up. I believe it's, I always talk about it. The National Center for Home Food Preservation, that's a website. And I really like that one. It has all of your food preservations. So if you're dehydrating, you're smoking, you're canning, you're freezing, it has all of that. Canning is really broken down into sections. Are you canning a meat? Are you canning a vegetable? Are you canning a fruit? And it tells you how to do it step by step. And you can print it as well. They also say it's super important if you're pressure canning to make sure that you um, are getting your gauge, your weight gauge um, tested. Make sure that's calibrated. Um, hop in the chat real quick. Hey, love lady. Hey, broke. Thanks for joining me. But I'm um, to get that tested. I don't have a, a um, dial gauge. I have a weight. So that doesn't need to be tested. However, you can still take it to the extension office. And it's only like $5. But take it to the extension office and they'll test your canner. They will test your rubber gaskets to make sure your seals are intact. You do not want to be in the middle of a canning project and your seal slips. So that's one thing that I need to do. I will be taking my um, canner to the extension office because I've had it for about six years or something. Just I'm going to take it there. Better safe than sorry. Um, one thing they said is that just because it's a ball book does not make it safe. You done taught me something new because I was like, Ball did it, it's gotta be safe. They said, no, 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 no. Actually, Ball says that um, 
they do not advise books late that were printed later than 2017. The reason is because as research grows, as we're doing more things, they're learning that that recipe, it wasn't exactly right. It wasn't exactly safe. And I do know, I've seen it for myself in older ball books where it's like, oh, well, you use um, lemons for the juice. You do not use the lemons for the juice because that acidity level could be off. So you want to use um, bottled lemon juice because that has a um, straight acidity level. So this is coming from Paul right here. It says, do, we do not advise um, to use books printed before 2017. So check your book. Check the inside cover to see what date it was copied. Um, they did the copyright on. Don't check the outside cover because they don't change those covers. Flip inside and you can see the date that it was published and everything. So they say, look at the copyright year. So far, that is all I have. Um, someone did ask me a question and I responded to him, but I'll go ahead and ask. It was about canning vegetable soup. They said that they feel that when they can the vegetable soup, the um, vegetables in, when they pre-cook their vegetables, they get too soft. And they asked if they could code pack it. They said, absolutely not. The reason for that is the recipe has been tested for a hot pack method. Hot pack, the materials, the liquid, the vegetables and everything, they're already hot. So that amount of time is calibrated for the hot pack method. It, you cannot use a hot pack method on canning something cold or canning something raw because your time is off. Now you have to wait for that heat to penetrate the inside of your food, the inside of your vegetable, of whatever it is, which is going to take longer. It's like throwing a frozen chicken breast in the oven. You know that you know the time is going to change. So it's the same thing. So no, no, they do not recommend that you can raw pack um, soup. Um, so far, that's all I have. And my battery is about to die soon. Um, but I appreciate you all. Does anyone have any questions that I can take back to them and ask? Um, hop in the chat real quick. Make sure I didn't miss anyone. I really appreciate you all joining me. Like I said, this was just an impromptu. I might come on for a little bit tomorrow after class. Um, we'll see. It's hot. And I had to walk like I was in school again, walking on that campus to the parking garage. I'm hot, y'all. And I'm tired. They only gave us a half hour for lunch. You should. I should what? Go live tomorrow. Is there such thing as over-processing a jar? Um, I'm going to ask them that question. I believe the answer is yes, because um, we're not canning only to can, only to hear that seal pop. We're, we're canning to preserve our food. So let's say that for canning green beans, it only takes 20 minutes. Well, that's also because the food is preserved. It's at the peak ripeness, um, ripeness. but um, you don't want to over can that. Also, that recipe is only accounted for that amount of time. So by over processing those green beans, you're they're, one, they're turning to mush. Two, you're boiling out all the water in your pressure canner. So, yeah, I mean, I would say five, ten minutes. If you, you know, you get in a phone call and you didn't hear the alarm going off because you're talking to your mom. Okay, that's one thing. But for the most part, to say to, I'm going to overprocess this and it's going to be safe. That's not accurate. That's not, you don't know. So, Accidentally overprocessed by a couple of minutes, okay, but intentionally, no, nah, no. Nah. But I will ask that to be on the safe side. And like I said, I'll probably go live tomorrow. Let me write that down. Let me grab a pen.
So you know me and my purple. I got my purple notebook and my purple pen. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? Hi, Gina versus Gina. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, pal, pal. I'm good. How are you? So some other things we're going to cover in this class. So today we went over health and safety and we did water bath canning. No, we did pressure canning. So we did two methods of green beans, hot pack and cold pack. And then we did a recipe called chili con carne. And that was pretty good. We had some leftover, so we test, we tasted it and everything. I will probably be doing that recipe on my channel pretty soon. Um, I don't know why they call it chili con carne because it was just chili. It was just chili to me, <laughs> chili. But um, it was pretty good. It turned out really good. So I will probably be doing that recipe tomorrow or sorry. I will probably be doing that recipe um, sometime on my channel. Tomorrow we're going over water bath canning and we are in the class, in the lab. We are going to can up some whole tomatoes and some salsa. And then we are also going to go over dry foods, um, so dehydrating. And someone asked a question about freeze drying. They said they will cover that question when we get to that section. So I'm really curious about that. How does freeze drying differ from um, dehydrating? And is it the same thing? Is it a new method? Like what's going on with that? Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for joining me. We will also be covering um, fermented and pickled products, jams and jellies, freezing foods, and then it says miscellaneous items. So we're going through a lot these next couple of days. Um, are they covering dehydrating? Yes. So that is, that will probably be, that will probably be, um, Tomorrow's Wednesday, so Thursday's class. I'm kind of taking a peek at the chapter. It's not very big. So again, this course that I'm taking is called Mastering Home Food Preservation. This is held through um, my county extension office and um, our extension office is Purdue University. My city that I'm in, Fort Wayne, they didn't have it. And when I tell you I called everybody at Purdue University, I mean, I called everybody at Purdue University because pre-2020, they did have the class. And then they kind of shut down the extension offices. And I was like, I want to do this while it's still fresh in my head. I don't want to forget so it was probably January or February. I started calling. <laughs> you doing a class? You doing a class? You doing a class? <laughs> and finally, and I was even like Facebook messaging, emailing random people. Are you doing the class? I'm willing to travel. Are you doing the class? Finally, somebody called me back um, in February and they were like, we're doing the class. <laughs> they, they were like, we don't have a date yet. Um, it will probably probably be in West Lafayette. The course was $200. It was four days um, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., half lecture, half lab. So um, I got on their email distribution list. They emailed, okay, this is the date of the class. Um, here's how you register. We registered online. They gave hotel information. Actually, we didn't stay at the hotel information because my mister, um, he's a trucker, so he gets points. So this was free of charge. 
Um, so, and it's only about five minutes from the campus. I'm not walking, but it's only about five minutes from the campus. TT saying, <laughs> updating her skills. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to let you all go because, like I said, they did give me homework. So, I have to read this chapter, and then there's a test that I have to take before class, and then we're doing a test after class. And I got to get me something to eat because all I have is breakfast this morning. I really appreciate you all um, joining me. I really do. And I know I haven't been very active, but I kind of figured there's only so many times you can can green beans. So. <laughs> but they also have these two books for sale and I'm going to get them both. Um, one of them is the USDA canning book. And then the other one, I don't remember the name of it. Um, I'll be grabbing them both tomorrow. They were both very thick. So um, if I go live tomorrow, I'll share, share that with you. And then um, maybe we'll pick some recipes out and I can do some videos on those. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. Bye-bye.